Hello and welcome to the Monday Market Update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 15th of July 2019 and the time has just gone 12.35 British summer time. Uh, it's been a broadly positive start to the European session. Uh, stock traded a bit, a bit higher overnight in, uh, in Asia and we've had a bit of a quieter start but largely a positive start to the European session. And we've had the, quite a few economic reports from China. Um, the biggest one, of course, was the second quarter Chinese GDP number, uh, which came in at 6.2%, its lowest level in a few decades. It's no surprise that China's slowing down, but it came in at 6.2%, um, which was in line with the economists' expectations. Uh, and keep in mind, the economy grew by 6.4% in the first quarter, so the economy is, is cooling, which is of no great surprise, but, but at least the report came in in line with expectations. There are other reports out as well. Uh, fixed asset investment, which which, uh, which actually came in slight, which actually showed an increase on the month and uh, came in better than expected, as did uh, industrial output and as did retail sales. So there are sections, certain sections of the um, of the Chinese economy which are actually not only uh, they managed to kind of beat economists' expectations, they're actually kind of slightly bucking the trend and actually um, and actually edging a bit higher. So there is there is a bit of um, traders are, are by and large. A bit more optimistic on the back of those numbers. Obviously, the, the economy is nowhere near as strong as it once as it was in say 2011. Uh, but it's, it's encouraging to see that some of the, the aspects are picking up. China, you know, in the last couple of years and the last year or two, especially with the trade spat in the United States, they've had very different um, easing policies in, in you know anything in, in the form of changing uh, of bank, banking uh, lending ratios or, or else anything from uh, local infrastructure projects trying to get the economy um, going at a, at a quicker pace and things seem to be going uh, at, a, at an okay state. Um, so what we've seen is things like mining stocks have actually been held off today on, on the back of that, on, on the back of the better expected um, numbers, say industrial production and fixed asset investment. The Australian dollar has also done quite well out of it. Uh, but to be perfectly honest, it's been a relatively quiet day in terms of news out of Europe. Um, I'll take a quick look now at the week ahead, and then we'll run through some major markets. Uh, look at the week ahead. Uh, the article can be found on our website, cfcmarkets.com, and under news and analysis, uh, you'll find uh, where the bulk of the, the updates myself and the other analysts do uh, get posted to. Uh, so we've already covered... Um, the Chinese figures, um, the manufacturing, uh, the industrial production, and, and the GDP, and so on. So um, today, Monday through Thursday, we have a number of U.S. banks reporting their quarterly earnings. So um, later today, we have uh, Citigroup, and then um, throughout the week, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, and J.P. Morgan, as, um, as well as, as a few of the smaller banks. On Tuesday uh, and on Wednesday, we have UK unemployment and earnings, and also the CPI. Uh, on Wednesday, we have. Um, Eurozone CPI, on Wednesday we have Canadian CPI, uh, Wednesday we have second quarter figures from both eBay and Netflix, uh, and on Thursday we have Australian unemployment numbers. Um, so I'll start off now by having a look at some of the major markets, starting off now with the, uh, the FTSE 100. So as you can see, the wider picture is that Throughout, say, late, throughout 2019, FTSE 200, like many European in indices, has been in a, in a solid upward trend. Granted, we've had, like, we've had seen some some, uh, some sizable sell-offs, but by and large, the trend has been very much the upside. Uh, earlier this month, uh, the FTSE 200 would not hit a level not seen since August last year. Even though last week was a positive week for US stocks, European stocks drifted lower, but only slightly. So we did see a bit of a drift lower, and now we are seeing the market uh, edge a little higher. Edge a little higher. This could be the, you know, the beginning potentially of the market looking to kind of press on higher and retest this area here in around 7,600. I know that the, the upper trend is still very much in play. And if we do manage to take out the recent highs here, we could be looking at targeting this zone here in around 7,794. But even if you do manage to kind of drift a little lower from this area, and we take out this area here in around 7,470, 7, the uh, the big kind of psychological number of 7,400 might act as support. And so potentially could this blue line here, the 50 day moving average, which comes into play at 73, 73.68. 
notice how on a few occasions it acted support um, in June and if a metric has acted support in the past it makes it more likely it will do so in the future but obviously there are no guarantees and I will be referencing the 50 moving average across uh, some other uh, equity markets. Take a look now in Germany on the, the DAX. Similar situation earlier this month um, the DAX hit a level once again not seen since uh, since August last year. It did drift, drift lower last week uh, but we are seeing a market actually kind of uh, turning around, uh, um, we are seeing the market trading higher this morning and if you do look to, uh, to press on higher from here we can really get retesting this area here that the recent highs of in around 12,660 and then if you go beyond that we could be kind of targeting this out here uh, up around uh, 12,887 but once again it's been in a wider upper trend throughout 2019 granted some of the sell-offs have been, have been reasonably aggressive but the big picture trend is still a, is still very much in place we can see here that the market is comfortably above its 50 moving average this blue line here which comes to play at uh, 12,188 on a few occasions that metric did act as support so if you do if it act as support in the past it makes it more likely it will do so in the future um, once if we do drift lower, this region could find some collective support, and even a drop below it, my, my support could be found from this area here, and uh, the kind of psychologically important 12,000 mark. I take a look at what's going over in the US, starting off at the Dow Jones. Quite a uh, so the Dow closed. Um, the Dow, U.S. markets had a fantastic run last week. The Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the Nasdaq 100 all set record highs. Um, so the markets are in very, very strong shape over the United States. Even today, uh, the fact that we actually had a record day on Friday, it looks as if we're going to set, set a new record um, today once markets open uh, in just under two hours' time. So the markets, you know, in a strong upward trend. We're looking at creating a new all-time high. So the sentiment's clearly bullish. So if we look to kind of press on higher from here. Because we're in kind of an uncharted territory, as it were, traders might be looking out for you know kind of big numbers like um, 27,400, 500, and so on and so forth. But the next, you know, given that we're comfortably above 27,000, um, the next kind of the really big kind of psychological number would, 20, would be 28,000. Uh, if the market does manage to drift a bit lower, this region here, 27,000, might act as a might act support. It acts as resistance um, very, you know, very briefly in early July on the way up. And we did see a bit of consolidation in rather that area, so that region might act as, uh, as support should we see a drift lower. And if not, this area here in around um, 26,660, 20, 26, this zone here, or maybe even down to 26,500. Notice how the market is comfortably above its uh, 50 moving average. And that comes into play in around 26,100 or 110 there, thereabouts. Take a look now. What's going on on the S&P 500? Similar picture with the S&P 500. Fresh all-time high was racked up on Friday. The market appears to be looking as if it's going to create a new all-time high when it opens. So the sentiment is clearly bullish. Uh, we're, we're currently expecting the market to open around 3,017. So traders will be looking out for potentially looking out for numbers like uh, 3,020, 30, 40, so on and so forth. If the market does manage to drift a bit lower. Uh, support could be found from this zone here in around 3,000. It's a big psychological number, but also we can see on a few occasions um, it did act as resistance as the market was you know, pushing higher. So um, if you do see any moves to the downside, uh, we could see fresh bars in the fold because, fold because the wider view has been for 2019, the market's been within an upward trend. Granted, this was a fairly sizable pullback, but nonetheless, um, buying on the dip over the longer uh, over the grand scheme of things um, proved to be a popular strategy. And even if you do drop below seven um, three thousand, uh, this this region here in around two thousand nine hundred and fifty two, this this zone here, um, two thousand nine hundred fifty five, two thousand nine hundred fifty two, this zone here might act as support. Once again, the fifth day move. The, once again, the S&P 500 is comfortably above its 50-day moving average, and the reason why I can reference that in in all in, uh, in all the markets and made reference to it on the on the 200 chart is because Dow theory tells us that the averages must confirm each other, and basically, while the 200, the DAX, 
uh, the Dow and the S&P 500 are all above their respective 50-day moving averages, it makes it more likely that the bullish trend across all those markets is going to continue. And then conversely, if we were in a downtrend and if we were driving lower and if all those markets were below their respective 50-day moving averages, it would, it would, you could be more confident that the negative trend would continue. So essentially, while markets are moving in the same direction, you can be more confident of the wider moves. Uh, take a look now at the gold market. So, so it was late June uh, a few weeks ago when the market hit uh, a six-year high, and to be honest, we've been sort of range-bound since then. It's you know, it's down, if, as long as the market holds in around kind of 1382, it's likely that we're going to see the kind of the wider upward trend continue. But we also the market has seen you know it's rather difficult to get below 1385, 1382. But at the same time, it's also found it very difficult to actually. Um, retest the recent, you know, the, the, the most recent high of been around 14.39. So you see it to be kind of range bound for, for, for the time being. If we do break above uh, the recent high of been around 14.39, we could be looking at targeting 14.85. 14.85 hasn't been seen, you know, once again, well, since May 2013. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. Should we actually have a fairly sizable break above 14.39? If you do drift lower at this region here, in around, uh, in around um, 30.85, 30.82 might act as support. And if you go below that, this, this area here, in around 13.60, might act as support. But you know, the, the wider upper trend is, uh, um, is still very much in play, in place. And the market not much long ago at a six-year high. So it gives you, you know, that kind of sums up just how kind of positive um, how kind of bullish uh, sentiment is on gold. Take a look now at what's going on on the oil market, starting off with Brent crude. So, decent rally between December and April, fairly sizable move to the downside, fairly decent correction. But since then, uh, we've had a, a nice series. Once you know, since then we've had a nice series of you know, the higher high, the higher low, and the uh, higher higher again, and we're back above the uh, the. This red line here, the 20 moving average at 66 spot 69. And if you can hold above that, we could be looking at you know, pushing a higher from here, potentially retesting this area here in at 70 spot 63. Any move to the downside could find some support from this region here in around 63 bucks a barrel, or potentially down to this area here in around in around 60 spot 30 so this this area here keep an eye out of the if we do see a fairly sizable sell off to the downside turning our attention now to wti similar situation wti a very large rally between december and, and april and then we've had you know a nice a fairly sizable sell off, so we had the lower low, the lower high, the lower low. But similar with WTI, um, similar with, with Brent crude, rather, we have been bouncing back uh, since about since early to uh, to mid June. So we saw the higher high, the higher low, and the higher high. So we, we, we and uh, we're comfortably above its 200 moving average. And while we hold above the 200 moving average at 57 spot 70, it's likely we could see the the kind of the more recent the uh, the recent bounce back since early to mid-June continues, so we can press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting this region here in around $64 per barrel. Uh, and the move to the downside could find some support from this region here, kind of 57 region or perhaps even down this area here in a 55 spot 91. And if you do have a size of break below that, it could take us back down towards 54. And like what I was saying about um, how the the, US and the, the, the FTSE, the Dow, the DAX and the S&P 500 were all above their respective 50 moving averages. The two major oil contracts are above are both above their respective 200 moving averages. So if you're trading one one of the oil contracts, keep an eye on what the other one's doing. And essentially, while both markets are above their respective 200 moving averages, you, you can be more confident that the kind of the, the bullish move in the last say five or six weeks is going to continue. Take a look now. What's going on over in currencies? It's been a fairly quiet morning in the currencies. Haven't you no know, euro dollar and and sterling dollar haven't really moved the whole lot. So the wider trend about 2019 has been to very much the downside on euro dollar. Stage a fairly decent comeback um, 
coming into late June, but notice how the market appears to kind of turn over on itself yet again. We're back below the 200-day moving average. Did manage to um, find some support in around the kind of 112 area, but essentially while we're sub the 200-day moving average, which comes into play in around one spot 1322, while we hold below that metric, um, it's likely that we could see kind of further pressure to the downside and a continuation of the, you know, the wider downward trend. Uh, if we take out the kind of 112 area, we could be looking at retesting this zone here in around one spot 1110, and a break below that could take us back down towards the kind of psychologically important 110. I take a look now at the sterling versus the um, sterling versus uh, the the, um, the US dollar. You know, once again, very much kind of wider downward trend as has been in place for, for quite a few months. Granted, we did meet to kind of find some support from this area here in at one spot 24.40, but it did appear that that the um, we're, we're, the, the the downward trend is still very much in place. We're still not, not, not anyway even close to kind of retesting the 50-day moving average. And I said to you, quite, while we can kind of hold below this zone here in kind of 126, it's likely that, that you know we could see the market turning over itself yet again, retesting one spot 24.40. And if we go below that, we could be taking us back down towards this area here in at one spot 23.65. If you do have a size of break above 126, we could be looking at retesting the kind of 128 region. And it's only really if you go above 128, because then we actually you know, begin, begin to think, you know what, maybe maybe the downward trend that's been in place for a few months has come to an end, and we could be looking at pressing it higher from there. Uh, one last thing before I go, I will be hosting a live seminar on a Wednesday, the 17th of July, uh, 1300 for the summertime, 1 p.m. UK time, uh, covering the what's going on in, with the, in relation to um, US um, banking uh, season. Um, the major U.S. banks, as I covered uh, at the beginning of the webinar, or, or the video, are, are uh, reporting their figures this week. Uh, some will have already reported by Wednesday, by Wednesday. Others will be reporting uh, on, on Thursday. And it's kind of a kind of a, a kind of a it'll just be a a short kind of um, live webinar on basically what's got what's been the theme throughout the um, the um, the kind of bank is the reporting season for the U.S. banks. What to kind of look out for uh, in banks that have yet to report their figures yet. Uh, one last thing before we go. If you have any comments to make in this video or any of the other videos we've made here at CFC Markets, please feel free to leave a review and the reviews. Thank you very much.